Hello and welcome to Web of Light. I'm Dr. Kevin. And Angie Tanshu. And we have a guest on today. Say hello to Midnight. Hi. So Midnight is here because we're going to be sharing your numerology special <laughs> uh, that you did at the Web of Light Expo Earth Day weekend that we had in Nashua. So Midnight has a few questions for you before we cut to the clip. Are you ready, Miss Angie? Oh, I think I'm ready. <laughs> okay. So, how long have you done numerology? I, I, over 30 years. <laughs> what? I had to give thought to that. It's, yeah, it's been over 30 years. So, she does numerology, but she doesn't count well. <laughs> hmm. That's kind of interesting. Let's ask her another question, shall we? So, why numerology? What is it about numerology that you like so much? I actually like numerology because it gives people very in-depth information about not just who they are, what they are, what they can do, what they can achieve, but it also uh, gives them a reflection of what's to come so that they can take care of the matters around them before something occurs. Well, what I heard her say was that she allows you to look into the mirror at your reflection and say, I got your number because Angie gave it to me. <laughs> what do you think is the most powerful thing that numerology can do for somebody? One thing, only one thing. I'm counting because I know you're not good at math. <laughs> the one thing that numerology does for you is helps you to determine what is best, the best path to take in the next few years because you'll know through numerology, and this has been going on since the beginning of time, uh, people can actually see what their patterns are year to year, month to month, day to day. Okay. Well, on that, this is Midnight. And Midnight is telling you, hold on, because we're going to hear her talk on numerology. So when she finishes, you're going to say, where can I find Angie so I can find out what my number is? Namaste. <laughs> So good afternoon. My name is Angie Danjou. I'm a spiritual consultant. Um, actually, I go on the Web of Light show. Uh, I'm part of the Web of Light Center, which is going to be happening up in Hudson, New Hampshire. Uh, we are going to have a, quite a supply of different events, activities, um, beautiful people coming in to join us um, in doing other creative opportunities. So just so that you know, we're in the local area. And uh, our next expo like this, and I thank you all for being at this expo today, which was created with Dr. Kevin and myself. And we really appreciate you coming and joining us. Hope you're having a wonderful day. So now that I've said that, um, my experience is I have come back through in my pattern. I am a spiritual consultant. I've been seeing angels since I was very young, um, but opened up my business close to 2000, 1999, 2000. I decided to go into a spiritual business. And at that time, um, I already had a lot of my gifts, but I also developed myself even further. I went in and became a Reiki master teacher, a Shambhala master, uh, hypnosis. I do hypnosis, but I only use my hypnosis in the past life regression work and Akashic work. So that being said, you know, the, those are the things I do. And numerology kind of caught a, a, a fancy with me. So now I offer numerology reports, numerology uh, reports on home numbers, on office numbers, on businesses, how they're going to do, how they're not going to do, on people. Um, so it's been, it's been a really fun piece of my journey, but it is complex. And so today you're all here to listen a little bit about numerology. And I want to say to you that numerology actually goes way back in time. Um, it started out with Pythagorean uh, method, started out way back. Uh, I mean, we're, we're going way back in history. And the whole thing is, is that the number systems, symbols, numbers of any type have been used throughout the centuries. Okay. And when we use these numbers, they come to realize that a lot of these numbers hold an energy. And so as you start to look at a person's birth date, uh, their name, the address they live at, the office they work at, um, all of the things, anything that has to do with numbers that reflects them, um, we can find out 
some of the value that we need to find out to make things work easier for us or to realize which door is easiest or best to open all through numbers. So that being said, the numerology I go through is it goes from one through nine and each number has its own power. It has its own power of energy. And then there's also the special powers of the 11 number and the number of the 22 number. And these are the higher superior numbers where most people that are, come into an 11, 22 energy are feeling um, they've gone through many life paths. They've, they're here for a special purpose. Okay. Um, so what I'm going to do today in this, because I really love numerology and, and I love to see people when they do this, is I'm going to actually have everybody do their life path numerology here on the spot, which is a very simple thing to do. Um, and I hope it's simple. <laughs> it's a very simple piece of math. It's addition. So we start out today by asking you to write down your birth date, month, day, and full year. In numbers, of course. And the way we come to our life path number is we start with the birth month. Um, if it's the number one through nine, then you take the value as it is. If it is a 10, 11, 12, you'll add each together. One plus zero is one. One plus one is two. Okay, that whole piece. A lot of times, though, I'm going to tell you right now that because if you are, who's in November 11? No Novembers, okay. 11s are special numbers. So when you come across an 11 total, you don't break it down. You don't do one plus one is two. That's another part of numerology. You actually keep that full 11 for that piece. So what I'd like you to do right now is look at your month, and if it's, uh, if it's whatever it is, that's the first number of your addition column. And if it's, one, if it's a 10, that would be 1. If it was 11, then it's going to be 11. If it's 12, it's going to be 3. Okay? The next thing you're going to do is look at your birthday. Okay? I guess same rule follows. 1 through 9, take the number of value, put it in the addition column. Uh, 10 is a 1, 11 is an 11, and 12 is a 3. And 21 would be a 3. So it's, it's kind of that same basis. If you add two numbers together, you should get one symbol, single number. If that comes out to an 11 or an 11, you don't bring it down to 2. You keep it at an 11. Okay. So 21 would be 3. It's the same kind of process. 22 would be 4. 25 would be, you know, we, we go on. So when you come to that for one number, number, one through nine, or 11, that's what you're going to have in your addition column. Okay? But if you have like a 25, you add the 25. That's going to be seven. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Yeah. And so, of course, the last step to that is to add your year, and it's the same idea. One, I'll go one plus nine is... Uh, 10 plus, I'm going to go to minus 5, that's 15. 15 plus 6 is 21. <laughs> I think. Yeah, I'm right, 21. It's been a long weekend. So that now that I came up to that 21, my, my 2 plus 1 would be a 3. Okay. No, the 11 is what you're concerned with. So once you get to that point, now you're adding the three numbers together. So in my case, um, six plus seven for my month and my date, and then I'd add the three for the 21. So it would be 13, 16. Once you do that piece, you either if you come out to two digits, like I just did with the 16, I'm gonna go one plus six equals seven. If you come out to a point where it's 11, 
you're going to leave it at 11. And at 20, so it's going to be 2. If you do come up with 22 at this time, at that point of it, you keep it at 22. If you came up at 33 at this point, you don't go 3 plus 3 is 6, you leave it at 33. So 22, if it's at that point at the end of the factor, 22 is, you don't go 2 plus 2 is 4, you leave it at 22. So there's no master number 44 yet? Oh, there is, but we don't deal with it, this piece of it. Okay. So now all of you should have your life path number in front of you. And the way I do this when I'm doing this right here with people is I'm going to be going through the whole entire, all the people in here are going to have an opportunity to give me their number, and I'm going to be giving them some of their personality traits that we receive by doing that piece of the numerology. This trait piece that I'm going to be working with, because this is from your life path number, it's going to derive what is your, your path doing, what is your life path doing. Okay, and that's only one little tiny piece to the whole object of numerology. Because once we go past that, we actually take your name and we apply numbers to all the letters and we add them all up and we add all the vowels, we add all the consonants. So it's very complex. Um, and then we add some of your birth date to some of the numbers of your name to get more complex. So numerology is not just Oh, good, I got my birth date, and that's it. It goes with your name. Women who change their name at marriage. Um, I've had actually people come to me and have a numerology to see what the changes would be around them once they change their name. <laughs> Some people will actually derive, like, okay, this was my last name. This is my new last name. So what if I keep the other name? What's my energy going to be? <laughs> and people will work with that. Um, there are actually people who, if they don't like what's going on around them, they'll legally change their name. They'll come to a numerologist to figure out the name that's going to serve the purpose that they want to be serving. So it's rather uh, unique. People will come sometimes and they'll have a few baby names and they'll go, okay, this is, these are the baby names. Which one's going to, what, what are they going to become through this numerology? And so it goes like a new home. Uh, realtors have actually had people do this with me. All right, so they're going to 685, da, da, da. And I'll take the with the city state and other to derive what that energy is going to be at that home and how they impact with it too. Because after that, we take their numbers and see how they mesh. So that's just how complex numerology can be. So what we're doing today in this room is just the very beginning little tiny piece to it. Because that one little tiny piece is just the core piece that starts the whole ball rolling. <laughs> Do uh, anybody have any, go ahead. Um, you said something about phone numbers too? Oh, phone numbers too, yeah. I've had actually people will check out the numbers if they can get them and see if they're gonna apply to what they want them to be. Um, for instance, my home number, if I go to my first home number, we can do that too if you have your home. All it is is the, the first number is a quick study of the space. So like mine is a six. So my six home is full of bringing people in, having them gather, um, having contentment, you know, joy and happiness and fulfillment of bringing people together. And since we moved in there, that's all that ever goes on in the place is always in and out people come in all the time and they're always comforted and uh, they feel peaceful when they come to the center because the center is all, also the six energy. So we go downstairs to the center and everybody gets into that calm. They get into that happiness. They want to kick their feet up and just relax. And it's the energy of that space. So, you know, and if you have that number, I'll do that as well with you. So I'm going to start with you. Any questions before I start? Go ahead. Anything in regards to numerology? Well, I have a question. Um, mm -hmm. so yeah. What do you do when you're adopted with the name? Because I have a name change. Yeah. Do you, it, what you do when you're using your name is you're using the name that you had at birth. Oh, okay. Okay. Whatever is on your birth certificate is what you use. Yeah, but
but whatever you find on your birth certificate, the original, is what you use as your birth beginning. However, as you move through life and your name changes, you have to start utilizing the, the name that you use at that time. Yes? Mm -hmm. But I have, my name is Americanized. Okay. But on my birth certificate... It's a Spanish version? Yeah, and they use the mother's maiden name also. Okay, you would use that whole... Yeah, so you use the your word. name, yeah, whatever, yeah. I understand what you're saying, because they used to have the... I understand what you're saying, because they used the mothers and the fathers. Yeah, I remember that, I and mean, that can be really long at times. <laughs> but yeah, that is what you came into the world with, so that's what you're going to use as your core numbers. Okay. And then whatever happens after that is going to change your core numbers and it's going to change the characteristics and the mannerisms and what affects you, what doesn't affect you. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Um, we're also going to touch upon today, if, if I have enough time today, I'm actually going to touch upon a little bit about how the personal year uh, works with you and how you can control yourself through the different universal year patterns. So I'm going to start here. These are going to be short excerpts because I want to give them out. Start with you with my hair. So what is the number that you receive from your birth date? Uh, three. Three? Okay. So in a three energy, um, and I'm working with your energy when I'm doing this, with the three energy, you are receiving uh, that abundance of having things fit. Everything always has to be, if there's no puzzle for it, you don't want it to be there. Get it out of the picture. That's the, like that's part of your thing. So you're constantly looking for the new puzzle piece to fit into there, and you're constantly constructing or you're constantly growing with things, okay? You also have a very close bonding with your divine in that respect because you have to make sure that everybody is accounted for and yourself. So it's a good balanced number because you will be one to bring things together, make things work, uh, getting people to organize. Organizing is a big thing with you. Okay? And your number? Three. You're a three as well. So I'm going to say to you, it's pretty much what we were just talking about. Uh, and what I'm feeling with this is with that three, there's also this almost like manifestation with you of um, having a lot of organization with your three. I wouldn't really know too much. I'm going to ask you what your first name is. Laura. Laura. Okay, that's why it's putting things together. It's like putting things together for compassionate reasons. You, because your, num your name, as soon as I figure it a bit, the first name is all about bringing compassion together, bringing people to the heart of the matter, uh, working with people to resolve their situations. Okay, so when you put your pieces together, it's all around that piece. Okay? I'll start. 22. 20, oh, you were 22. <laughs> is that good? Yeah, 22s are very good. They're old souls. Okay, <laughs> so no matter what you it is that you go through, you kind of say, yeah, I can handle it. But you always have to direct others to how to handle it. Okay, so that is your life path. You are the leader. You are the mentor. You are the facilitator. Everyone will start to keep looking at you for direction and guidance because there's an energy from you that penetrates and says, that's the go-to, to know what we do with the blocks because they already know from their past existence. Okay. So you're, you're up in that. A two. a two. Okay, so twos are organ they organize, they bring people together. Twos are usually uh, all about keeping peace, all about bringing people together as mutual friends, all right? They also enjoy to... Um, their enjoyment is like, I don't want to be always doing something uh, for just one person. I want a whole group to take in something. So if I entertain, I'm going to put it way out there so I get a good punch. Two, that two energy is very fulfilling to you as long as somebody else is involved with things. If, if it's only going to affect you and help you, you have to make sure that whatever you deal with is going to help and affect the person that you're surrounded by. Okay. Seven. Seven. Okay. Sevens are, um, you sometimes will have an opportunity. You, you sometimes go into like, uh, how can I say it? It's like being a little doubtful of somebody or not really having a big trust with people. 
okay? It's looking at, you actually have the tendency with the seven, what they do is they generally have a tendency of and knowing that if it doesn't really fit with me or the person doesn't really fit around me, I'm not gonna really trust them that much and I'm gonna maybe replace it or make a niche with it, okay? So you're in this path of making sure that the people that surround you in your life are those that really fit into your puzzle or even your job, your work, your home. You're constantly going to be looking for that uh, truth, integrity, okay? If, you're, if somebody's gonna tell you something that's awry and you find out, you're very upset, okay? Tr trust and truth is very important with a seven, okay? okay. Three. three. So you're three, I'm gonna ask you your first name. Marion? Mary Lou. Mary Lou, thank you. Oh, okay, so you're in that three, but you're the one that's, um, I wanna say that if I tell you it's gonna be there, it's going to be there. You, that's you, okay? <laughs> Everything has to be precisely in its spot, but also it has to really be worth having there. Because if it isn't worth having there, why do we have it? Not, not with that piece. Oh so, <laughs> three. You're a three, first name. Anita. Anita. You can't stay still. There's a lot of moving around, and when you move around, you like to see different things. You don't like to go, like, I'm gonna be here and see this, and I'm not gonna go over there and see something about numbers again. I want something new the next time. I wanna keep moving into new ventures. But the movement is good. For you to stagnate and stay in one spot for too long a period of time, you get, oh, enough, I gotta get out of here. So that three is ever evolving. You're not gonna just, if you were in school or something, I don't feel you'd stay with one subject. You'd bounce around and do a few. That type of, that, that's what your three is all about. Thank you. Okay, next. Five. Five. Change, change, abort change. You, if something's not fixed, you see, it's like you don't stay with something unless you really like it because you don't have to. You can just move around and change it. And if I want to change it, I will and you're constantly changing and fives generally don't stay in one place too long or they don't stay at one occupation or, or one type of thing for a long period of time. They're constantly wanting to move on to some other pieces. Okay, Everything around you uh, sometimes gets a little scurried because it's like I feel like I'm settling. Oh wait, no I'm not. There's another venture opening. Okay. You like in gambling, if you gamble, the fives are good for gambling or, or creating um, luck in the gamble drawer. Mm. No, I don't gamble. What are you? Wand. Wand? Oh, <laughs> the wand. <laughs> Ones are very, you're all into leadership. You are good for management. Um, you want things to be the way they're supposed to be, okay? So the one is like that. I'm on this line, and this is what needs to be done, and it's gonna get done like now. And you stay in that pattern, because if it's not done, we're not moving any further. The one is that you can control. It's like, um, when I think of the one, it's like the empress. Okay, so you do that, you do that, you do that, and that's the way it's gonna get done. I'm not doing all this for you. Each one of you is gonna do what needs to be done. So that's a, it's a leadership number. Eight, oh, okay. Eights tend to be those that they ask, they receive. Feel that you go through issues, but every time, like if, if you go through something, a pattern of, uh, let's say bad luck, the, the sunshine that comes out of it is like tremendous. So even though there are some times when you feel a flutter, the, what you get out of it is huge. And that's like a piece of your piece is to be close. You're the infinite number. So there's always an infinite thing going on and you're always looking for new things to reach for. But as you reach for them, all you have to do is think of them and they come together. Keep with the eight. Four. Four, Four is very creative. Um, they tend to uh, not want to rush around with things. They tend to be in their own quiet mode. They tend to to see the art, do the art, uh, work with, and, and they're, they're going to be involved with um, the finer piece of it. They're not looking for the details, they're looking for the rewards of it. Okay, 
So that's a small little piece to this. All right, and that's the beginning piece that I shared with you. Um, did you want yours, Matt? Sure, uh, one. You're one? Yeah. Yeah, manage putting things where they need to be. Um, and it's funny because you're very strong with that because of your first name, Matt. So that means that nobody's going to, it's like it's organized, organized, organized. And with your first name, it, it's like really solid. And if they're not organized, get out of my face completely. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so the next piece I want to talk about today, which is really important, is when you go through your life path and get into your personal years. So I'm going to start by saying that every year is a universal year. That means that the energy of the year is surrounding the entire world, the universe, okay? And of course, the way we find out the universal year is by taking the actual year. So this being 2017, we have the 2 plus the 0 plus the 1 plus the 7. It's a 1. 1 in our universal year patterns and the monthly patterns Yearly, monthly, numerology is done by this system. So the one is a year of renewal or new beginnings, all right? And with that comes a lot of sometimes turmoil because we are pushed into, if we haven't renewed, if we haven't started something new, it's going to get done. And right now our world is in that process. So this begins, if you remember, I told you one through and then if you get to 10, it becomes a one again. So this begins the process of our universe for the next nine years out. So whatever goes on in this 2017 year is actually going to manifest what's going to be coming for the next nine years. All right, and it's a very important year because of that. So what people want to manifest, they need to concentrate on manifesting that and putting the right bricks together to do it. So this is a very important year, no matter what number you are in your life path, it's a very important year to start that process, knowing that the universe, okay? And as we go through the next nine years, each year, depicts another piece that needs to be be concerned with. So year is all about new growth, all of that. New goes into signing contracts, um, having things come together in a peaceful way, um, anything to do with communication coming together, people coming together, places coming together. That's the two energy. The three energy brings us into putting the puzzle pieces all together so that they fit. So we started the process, we go into the two and we start to put the patterns together that need to and start signing the contracts. The three, when the three universe comes, now we're starting to put the pieces together to see what really fits and if it does, it stays. If it doesn't, it's leaving. The four, we go into, okay, done this, let's start creating with it. Let's see what we can do with this because now it's the creative energy for that year. Then we go into the five energy because now we've done all the creating. All right, so now what are the changes we have to make? Because we've seen it in the whole process. Now the five is taking control and the five is going to tell us, okay, let's get the changes done. So it could be a really whirlwind because they say, oh, you know, that didn't really work, so let's change it up to this. Let's change it up to that. Maybe we need to move. Maybe we need to get a bigger space. Whatever it may be, that five energy is going to be. Six energy, though, all those pieces that you just went through, the six energy year is bringing you that. Okay, I feel a little balanced. I know I am. I know where I want to be. Things are starting to come together and be balanced around me. I'm feeling comfortable. Uh, I'm starting to deal a lot with family issues that year because I want to make sure those are all set. And then comes the seven. So you've started to be comfortable. You get everything together and starts fire again because the seven year is truth and integrity. So if anything doesn't is untruthful, it's time to get rid of it. 
It's also a time for getting closer to your spiritual thoughts on all that you're processing. Okay? When you get to the eight year, the year of glory, I call it, because it's infinite. So I ask, I receive. I've done all my work. Now it's all going to start to flow. It's all going to come. Okay? If there's ever a year that you're going to do really successful work in, it's the eight year. And then we come to the nine, which means that we're coming to a completion and we're getting ready for the new energy to come back into the universe. Um, the nine energy is pretty much, okay, all of a sudden things hit you in the face and either you lose a, a work position, uh, maybe you're closing the chapters to something you're doing because you're just tired of it. Anything that needs to be cleaned up, it's like the cleaning the air. Okay, we clean it up, we close it up, we finish it. All, and if we do this on the right, you know, we get it done, then when that one year comes, we're ready to open the new doors. We've already done all our spring cleaning. So we're ready to go up again. And that's our pattern, the nine-year pattern. So the world has a nine-year pattern, and we as individuals on the earth also have a nine-year pattern. Only our pattern goes with our birthday. So what you do to get to find out what your personal year is for yourself in 2017, okay, is you take the number for your birth day, the number for your birth month, and the number for this year, 2017. So now you're going to add the day. I mean, the month, the day, and remember, we bring it down to the lowest number, unless it's an 11. And then the one for 2017, add it all together. Bring it to the lowest number, unless it's an 11 or 22. 33. And that end result that you have right there is this is the personal year that you specifically are working through right now. So, that being said, now we look at the energies of what you're working through, whatever that, and that could be one through nine. You could be having an 11 years. Some people do have 11 years, and those are years of really learning by going around the world five times, and then I finally figure it out. So that does happen. What about a 10? That's a 1. That's a 1. Mm -hmm. All right. So as we just mentioned, all of the 1 through 9s, OK, whatever you came out to, is that's the energy that surrounds you. So if you're in a 1 energy, you're more than likely um, starting to open new doors, or you're renewing something or you're being vibrant. If you're in a two energy, sometimes you're getting married, sometimes you're signing contracts, uh, sometimes you're getting things resolved with people that surround you. And that's the course of your year. That's what you need to focus on because that's a good time for you to do that. Three energy, you're looking at putting the puzzle pieces together of all that's been surrounding you because and most of us have that three energy here. And once we straighten it out, we can move forward. Four energy year, be as creative as you can, because from your creativity, you'll understand where you need to be. Five, um, you're either going to be moving, changing things around, doing some upkeep to your home, doing some upkeep to your office, changing your office space. Something's going to go on that's going to make some change for you. Even the technique. Uh, let me see. Uh, I paint murals now. I'm going to start to paint uh, black and whites. Yeah, just any types of changes, but they're made for a purpose. Okay. Six energy. If you're in the six, that means you're actually it's almost like the year off because you start to nurture yourself a family. You start to understand where you truly fit and how you feel more comfortable in the surrounding that you've created. Okay, a lot of compassion work at that time too. And then the seven, you're having doubts about things. You're having doubts about what's around you. You're actually on a spiritual journey to find more of what's within you and how you connect to the universe and how you connect to divine. 
That seven is a fulfillment of understanding you and the highest knowledge. And then get to the eight. If you're in an eight year, anybody in an eight year here? Okay, use it to your highest potential. Ask, receive. I see it. Put the blinders on. See what you want to create this year. Do it. It happens. Very important year for that. Really, a, that, that's one of our finest years because we have that potential. Ask angels. Ask yourself. Put the blinders on and focus, and that's what I want. That's what I get. The nine year is... I'm closing down something, I'm filing something out, I'm cleaning out a whole place, I'm cleaning out my mind. <laughs> it's all about cleaning, getting rid of what doesn't no longer need to be there because you're getting ready because in 2018, you're going to start opening up to new experiences or changing where you are or doing something much different than what you're at. Okay. So I've gone through all of that. How do you feel with that when you think about yourself and your personal year that I just discussed? Anybody have any thoughts on that? <coughs> do you feel it's following you? I mean, what we just said? Yeah. I can relate. Huh? I can relate. I can't hear you, honey. Oh, I said I could relate. You can relate, yeah. Um, and that's, again, what I'm doing here right now is just this little tiny piece of it. And numerology affects all of us. And numerology has been used. They used to use it in the back times to figure out what was the best date for them to sign a contract, what was the best date for them uh, to get married even. People will come to me and say, well, we've got a choice of these dates. What's the best date? <laughs> and they'll have me do the numerology to see what the energy is and how that works with them. Because if it doesn't work with them, they don't feel they want to mess with it. <laughs> it's pretty uh, amazing how that all... And every, okay, so when you... Now I did the month, did the year. We also... Numerology goes down to the actual day. Like I just said, they can pick a day that... Um, every single day has its own number. So like right now, um, it's the 23rd of April, 2017. So this is the 4. The 23 is a 5, so that's 9. And then the 1 for the 2017. So we got 9 plus 4. And 1 is 14. This is a 5. This is a good day for change. If somebody wanted to really... If I was to look at my calendar and say, hey, here's a five, and I was planning on moving, that would be the day I'd say, you know what, this is going to be a really easy day to move. It's going to be a really good day to change something up. It should run smoothly on that day. Okay, tomorrow's going to, and one of the other things, if you haven't noticed, for the most part, today's a five, tomorrow's going to be six, the next day's going to be a seven. It, it goes in motion. Sometimes you'll hit an 11, if you hit an 11 day, or 22 day, or 33 day, or 44 day, those have a little bit of a different vibration to them than the typical twos or the fours. Um, so numerology really is all around us. And if you were to start to look at some of those pieces and take into you know, the factors of, oh, this is a such and such day, what went on today, you'd start to see that it really does effect. If you look at 2017 to this point in April, look at what's going on. You know, new renewal. Um, it's still, this is the forming piece. We're only in the beginning few months of 2017. So as we progress through, if we don't like something or we want to get things to go right with this, uh, we have right up until probably seven or eight of the, you know, those, ye, the, these next months are going to determine how the situation is going to be as the years unfold. So it's a very important year to make those decisions, to know what we want renewal and what we want to change to be new with. Because the only time we're going to be able to change it after this is when we get to the five universal year, which would be... 
2021. <laughs> this is a year to voice yourself, put yourself out there, and know that this is what we want as a universe. Because that's going to start the pattern for the rest of the nine years. Don't, and remember, things change because in these other years you have the, like next year we have an opportunity to do more contracts. We have the opportunity to make closer commitments. You know, the next year we have an opportunity to put the puzzle pieces together so they fit the right way and get rid of the puzzle pieces that don't belong. And as we go, we progress with that. And I, I, I give you all homework. Take yourselves home. Start with just that very simple personal, the, the universal year. Go back to 2000, go all the way up to now, and reflect in your mind what went on in those years. And I'll show you that you're gonna see that it kind of follows that pattern. We can actually go with numerology, and I can actually go back in a person's back path and say, okay, so right now you're in the four energy. Let's go back and see the last time you were in the four energy. And if I go back there and look at that last time you were in the four energy, 10 to one, on all honesty, there are a couple that will flicker, but the most part, people can look back at that and say, oh, I guess it was kind of the same pattern. It might have been a different subject, but it was the same type of pattern that I was in. So we actually can use this to determine, okay, when's that next four year coming? <laughs> and I'm, now maybe I can prepare for it so that I can turn the path around if I need to before it hits. <laughs> now, in numerology, you don't just have the regular numbers. There's a lot of other detail to it. There's, uh, there's actually numbers for um, every, so many, every seven years of your life. There's numbers for um, the different um, pinnacles that we go through, okay, which means that we have portions of our lives that are meant to be doing certain things as we progress into age. So there's more factors that are brought into these numbers to get very technical and, and very precise with things around a person. Some people will do love charts. How do we correspond with each other? Because that too, um, a lot of times, people's energies with their numbers will not be compatible. And other times, there's compatible numbers, there's non-compatible numbers. There's compatible days, there's non-compatible days with each person's energy. So when you put that all together, you actually can manifest a lot. And you can also avoid a lot of frustrations because if you know it's coming, you can fix it. Or you can at least put some effort into fixing it. <laughs> Any Okay, so I'm not going to go into, I want to go into a little bit of a question time here because I'm sure there's questions out in the spot, I think, out that way. Anybody? Did you have something? Yeah. So next year would be an 11 year. Does that factor into the universal year? 2018. Right. It's going to be a 2 and it's going to be an 11. Um, okay, that's, I'm glad you brought that up. <laughs> that was a very good thing to bring up. Even though it's a 2 year, it's also is, it has that 11 energy. So whenever we have the 11 energy, there's a lot of things there. Okay, remember I told you, you have to go around five times to get what you really need if you're an 11 energy. The 11s, I have, I have a standing joke with 11s because I, I say, oh, you're an 11. Because the 11s are here to understand their journey to the max. So when we hit an 11 point, um, around the circle four times. I'll go around four times before I get what I truly want to get out of it. Okay, and so when we do hit these 11 patterned years, um, expect things that if it's not resolved once, it's going to take a few times to get it to stick. But if I need to do a contract, I might have to sign it four times or look at it four times before I sign it. Or if there's something that needs to be, anything that needs to be signed, anything that needs to come together in, a, in like a companionship, it's not, when it's the 11 energy, it doesn't just come together like a magnet. It needs to be really obscurely looked at from all sides before it comes together. And that's, that's what the thing is with the 11. However, when it does that, we all, whoever's in that energy, we learn the lessons 
from having to have the patience and having to have that construction of going through some, I'm falling off, up oh, and back up, I'm falling off, oh, and back up. So it's a part of our learning lesson in our spiritual journey. So there is a purpose to the 11. And in all reality, if somebody is a full 11, um, they actually, after all the struggle that they might have, they get the greatest reward comes flying at them at the end of it. <coughs> so next year, be prepared. Put your hats on. Think before you leave. <laughs> Another question or thoughts? Anybody? Is there anything else, any other aspects of numerology that you are interested in me talking about that you might know of that I haven't brought up? Is it true that when you look at your name, it's A through Z is 1 through 26? No. no. That's a different type of numerological pattern. Okay. I, myself, I work with the Pythagorean. Again? Pythagorean, who was a... Numerol he was a numerologist, but he was also a mathematician. And in that system, it's one through nine. So you go A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. Mm -hmm. And then you start all over again. J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R. There are, um, the Chalcedonian does, one, it's like you just said, one through 26. But the one that I feel from what I experienced with it uh, Chalcedonian can, I feel it's more of that intuitive piece that is brought out with people when they use that, whereas the Pythagorean is like the precise, it, it, it takes you all apart because it's those nine, nine, nine. You have to remember um, when we do this, we have a line with the vowels, we have a line with the consonants, and we have a line with all of the letters. So, and we also, and as you noticed, I had asked what your first names were. The way I picked that up a little bit was the fact that their first vowel was such and such. Okay, so if it's an A, then you have that, it's, it's that one energy. So most people, when you meet them, you can actually tell them as soon as you hear their name, you can, in numerology, realize what their potential is by the vowel. Pretty bizarre, but it generally will go on. And that stays true for like addresses and things like that. I never yeah. That. Yeah. No, the addresses. We're good. I'm glad you brought that up because we can do that. Um, your number, your address numbers. If you want to, you don't have to have to do the whole. You can. That would be good to do the whole address. That would be your number, your street, and then the word street or road, whatever they do. You can do this on your own. And that will all come out to a certain number. You just have to keep minusing it down to the number. But right now, uh, just the number, if you want me to, I'll go through it. 19. 19, so that would become a 10, which would become a 1. So your place is very, like, organized. Um, there could be a lot of leadership values with this space. I feel that your home would probably be in a place that was more significant than other homes around you. It had a better uh, value or it had a better property of being. So when you're in this home, it, it draws you to having people that are very precise come to your door, having people that are very logical come to your door because they're in that one energy. Okay. Are you the same number? What is it? 23. 23. So five. Change. You, do you always see now with the five, there's a matter of, uh, I don't like this, I'm going to change that. Or somebody else comes in and says, hey, you know what, I think I want to change this for you. They're, or somebody in, in the atmosphere is constantly going through changes. So usually when you're in the five home, it's a little bit unsettled because there's always something new going on, okay? And that's what the five energy will be around you. Four. Four. A lot of creativity. Four, four homes bring creativity. I wouldn't be surprised if there weren't like some really nice art, art pieces or pieces around it. it. Well, it started out as 94, which is a 13, and then it, you know, it, it equals out. Oh, it's a night. Okay. Yeah, that's still a four. Yep. So the 94 that comes down to a four. So when you have that, again, it's creativity. 
things that are surrounding it, you can create in there, you can feel good about doing stuff in there. It, it's got that feeling of, let's get this accomplished. It's a, a very accomplishing space. But I wouldn't be surprised in that for uh, that you don't have a lot of like completed pieces of art or, or sculpture or something like, some kind of design, because usually that's what goes on. And did you want to? Yeah, I'm a 26. 26, so that yeah, means it's a, eight. Yeah, that's a very nice space to be in because it always presents itself with um, giving you something. Um, you feel relaxed in there because you're, feel, you're yeah. It's, it like brings and draws everything in that needs to be there, okay? If you have a business out of that home, it's too bad because if you did, it could bring in a good prosperity. So give some thought to that. <laughs> okay, next. I'll start here. 275, so it'd be a... 275. Four. No. Five. Five, again. Um, there's a lot of changes that go on in, around your home. Um, things that you, and I, and I feel with this one, is more the people coming in and going, leaving, coming, going, or doing something that's always a different task around there. Okay, so the energy is always abundantly moving around. Okay. Um, four. four. Again, it's another creativity space. The thing with this one is I'm feeling um, that it's, more of like um, the relaxing creativity, like I'm gonna play with um, watercolors or I'm gonna play with something that's, uh, I, I'd see like sand gardens or gardening or something, that's the, the feeling I get out of that for with your home, okay? Good place for you to have plants as well. Twelve. Oh, oh, 11? Oh, <laughs> how long have you been there? Um, sometimes you see yourself going around in circles with what needs to be done in the space. It's constantly giving you something that gets corrected. Am I correct? Yes. Yeah. Um, you need to put a little bit of balance into that home to bring back the two, which brings people together more. Okay. Um, balance maybe in a crystals, maybe in a little feng shui, but to bring that 11 into the two. Because the 11, what it does is it's constantly going to have you having things that need to be looked at or things that have to be altered in there. And that gets old after a while. It, it does good for it. It does good for it. Don't get me wrong, because you get nice results. But there's a point where you go, like, OK, enough is enough for now. So bring in some kind of crystals or something that's going to ground that energy. OK. Mine's an 11. Oh, another 11. <laughs> You say crystals, I'm like, I can't put any more crystals in my house. Okay, so <laughs> you have to look at the type of crystals that you want to put into that house. Because if you're an 11 and you're putting some vibrant crystals into there that have a lot of energy, um, it's even, you're double whammying yourself. <laughs> okay? <laughs> so do stock on that. Do stock on what you have in there for crystals. And start to look that are going to mellow it out, that are going to push that energy down okay. a little. Okay? A little bit of grounding. Yeah. <laughs> Next. Nine. Nine. Um, your house, there's always, like, you know, people feel like you have everything complete. So I feel that it's like um, I come in and everything's done, or I come in and everything feels like it's just um, way at the right speed. So I'm not really too concerned with the nine because a nine is one that by the end of the day you can relax and you know that things are finished. Okay? You have another 11. Oh, okay. And I bet now in your 11, because this is what comes to me in your 11, there's a lot of chaotic energy that finds itself to your door. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You understand that? So you got to start locking the door a few times because they don't all have to come in. Okay? <laughs> but when you do that, you still have companionship, but you don't need it all. Okay? You, you understand that, right? Okay. <laughs> Next. 
11th. Oh, you're in that same home? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. You have to help her because there's a lot of chaos that's coming in from your sleeve. It's probably me. You cut it back a little. Okay. I would tell you to meet some of, some of those people or some of those situations away from the house because it's got enough to deal with. <laughs> Nobody leaves anything behind. That's the big clue. And thank you all for being here. And thank you for being at our event today. Be well. Thank you.